Welcome to Parenting Today's Teens, a daily podcast that provides stories, insights, and wisdom to help you gain a deeper relationship with your teen. On today's episode, Mark Gregston and Wayne Shepard discuss the topic of your teen and drugs. Let's hear what they have to say. Our program today can be summed up this way, Mark. Wake up, your teen may be using drugs. That's right, and most parents don't have a clue to whether their child is or not. You know, usually you find out your child is after a period of time that their involvement has already been established, and most parents don't know. I mean, at the beginning of things, they don't look at the signs, they don't see the changes that that they need to look for in a teen, and as a result, what happens is their child is already involved in something, and now they have to solve a bigger problem had they just been thinking a little bit different and searching and looking for things within their home, they may have picked it up a little sooner. Is it that I don't want to think the worst of my teen? You know, I think most parents feel my child won't do drugs, and so I'm not going to assume that they are, and so I never look for it. And so I don't pick up on the clues that may be laying around the house or changes in in my child in such a way that, that they just don't see it. Hmm. I mean, they really believe good things for their kids, but they don't see it. And the and the four words that parents tell me all the time in dealing with drug and alcohol abuse, I had no idea. Hmm. And I go, you know what? You're absolutely right. You didn't pick up the signs. You know, Mark, when we were growing up, drugs were around, but you really had to go look for them, didn't you? Yeah, they weren't as available. I mean, and today kids can get them anywhere. I mean, you can go to a mall, you can go to any school, Christian schools included. Hmm. You can go to any high school, any public school included in those things. And you can go anywhere, whether it be, uh, you know, on a softball field, in athletics. I mean, it's prevalent. And because it's so prevalent, kids know where to go. And during those down times of their life or, or, or perhaps fleshing out a need to engage with a new group of kids or something traumatic happens and a child is kind of wrestling with things in their life, if you know that is an option and you couple that with the curiosity of teens and what they hear from other kids, they hear, try this, it's just a one-time shot, it's not that big of a deal. Then you have a, an equation that is setting your child up to perhaps moving in a direction that, that uh, you would have never thought they would have moved in. And this happens to good kids all the time. And, and their testimony is that my friend wanted me to try it with them. It's always a friend, isn't it? That oh, yeah, them. yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, and I think that, that it, it's not that they're bad friends. I, I think that's how just life happens with teens. They do things that are available. They're curious. That's right. And the, out of their need to belong and to, and to follow a friend's guidance, I don't think a friend is not a friend by offering a kid something that way. And I don't say that, that they're all good kids. I'm just saying it's the nature of adolescence. Mm-hmm. But, I, but, you know, I think there's another side of this that, that has got to be looked at. Most of us have raised our kids in a Christian home. I mean, and we really believe that if we just do these things, then it will insulate them against the world's influence. I mean, we say, train up a child in the way he should go, that that we will we will surround him and build into him God's word, almost as if if they make a mistake, then maybe we made a mistake. And I go, I don't believe that's true. I think this culture is so intense and so many things are available that it is pounding on our kids and it's a tough world. And we know, we know that it's a tough world because every one of us says we would not want to be raised in this world as well. But in the midst of that, the pressures that our kids feel, if our teens come home, if we're not giving them the opportunity or the atmosphere that allows them to relax and to get their mind off of the struggles they're dealing with, they will go somewhere Mm. to find relief. They will go somewhere to find relief. And most parents say, well, no, that's not my child. Not possible in my home. And that's why so many kids get involved in things and parents never knew. You know, and and my defense to that to that statement is simply this. I've had 2,500 kids come and live with me over the last 
25 years. And they're great kids. They're wonderful they're, to talk to. They're and... great kids. And the, and the parents are wonderful. But those parents say, I had no idea. Mm. Let's talk about the behavioral signs. Uh, we're talking here about uh, waking up to the fact that your teen may be using drugs. So when do I begin to suspect? What do I look for? Uh, you know, I think you look for a combination of things. These aren't in priority by any means. But, but one of the things is they begin to lie a little bit. You ask them questions and they become deceitful. They become a little manipulative manipulative in their words. You know, they don't share the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I mean, there's a side of it where they are avoiding, you know, the consequence of being caught, but you start to see the line. You see the breakdown in normal habits. You know, it's almost like what they liked yesterday, they don't like today. Mm -hmm. And so you see something begin to change and you go, something's happening. Something's going on. That can be kind of normal sometimes, though. Yeah, well, it? it can it's be. It's part of it, growing up. Oh, it is. And that's a part of adolescence. I mean, it, it changes rapidly. But don't excuse that your child may be doing something illicit, illegal, that may be involved in something that you would have never thought of. I mean, how many parents say that that their parents knew that everything they did hmm. uh, while they were growing up in high school? Not at all. No. Nope. Well, then what makes any parent today feel like they know everything that's going on in the life of their child? And when you put those things together, it just say, be observant, be aware, and be, and be thoughtful that there's a possibility that your child may be moving in this direction, and it's better to be prepared to deal with those issues and not ever have to engage in those conversations with your child than to be unprepared and not knowing what to do when your child is involved in those things. All right, we've already mentioned that friends often introduce friends to drugs. So if you see a change in the group of friends that your uh, teenager is hanging out with, that maybe is one sign, perhaps. It is, it is. You know, you, you see that begin to change in such a way, and they may go what we call going dark. Hmm. I mean, there's something about just the attitude, uh, the depression that begins to sit in when your child can't get out of bed in the morning. They they stay out late and come in uh, very late, and they're just not themselves, and and they're kind of drab and dull, and the and the little spark that you used to see is now gone. The glistening in their eye that every mother knows that is their child is no longer there, and it's kind of just a dreary type of existence, and you begin to see that happen. And what's happening is your child is using, and as they start coming off of some of that, they get down, that forces them to need to use again mm -hmm. to get back on top. Mm -hmm. And that is how an addiction begins. How do kids pay for drugs? You know, I think they, they share a lot of those drugs. I mean, that's how it starts out. Hey, come on. Hey, you can have some of mine or take this, take that. And then they come up with this idea. Hey, wait a minute. I can make money off of this because what one person does, then they go out and do to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Because if people believe that, that kids are in a social network and they want to connect with each other, then in the midst of connecting and this generation that longs to to not only communicate but belong to to a group of people somewhere because because their their communication isn't allowing them to connect as well then sometimes doing some of this other behavior that makes them feel a little bit more rebellious and and a little bit more on the edge they will do something together and uh, yeah, they, it just starts feeding it. If you notice your teen is starting to steal, they're probably trying to come up with uh, money and the wherewithal to buy more drugs. That's right? right. I mean, look in your purse. Count the money that you have in your purse. What about those those change jars around the house? If your child says, well, I took it to a pawn shop and got rid of it, <laughs> you kind of have to scratch your head a little bit and go, why would you do that? Mm -hmm. Or they take on extra little jobs or they start saying, how can I make more money? You know, any change that you see, just be observant. How about the the mood of our teen? If we notice any change there, we ought to be asking ourselves questions, right? Oh, you should be. I mean, when they start blaming everybody else, when there's a great sense of disrespect, the mood swings. They're high one time and, and excited, and the other time they're kind of angry and down and, and just kind of blue. When you see anger start to come out, I mean, it's just heightened emotions, and, and, and perhaps they become a little aggressive as well. I mean, 
where they're saying things that they would have never said, where they push you, where they make comments to the other siblings. It's those kind of things you need to look for. I was just wondering if siblings maybe pick up on potential drug use for their brothers and sisters before the parents do. Oh, I think they do sometimes. But if they're younger, they have no idea what's going on. Mm. I mean, they just kind of know something's not right. Mm -hmm. And so if they're older and may have been in that place before, they may be coming back to the child going, hey, hey, I know what you're doing. Don't do this. So sometimes it's better to ask that older child. And usually that older child says, Mom, come on, pull your head out mm-hmm. of the sand. I mean, there's something going on here. If you're a parent of a teen, you know that today's teenagers live in a different world than the one you were raised in. That means your style of parenting needs to be very different too. Too many parents parent their teens with principles that come across as authoritarian or judgmental. And such styles just aren't effective anymore. There is a better way, one that helps parents and their teens thrive together in today's culture. In the nine-week video course, Tough Guys and Drama Queens, Mark Gregston will give you a new vision of the sort of role they could play in the life of their teens and help them understand the world through the eyes of their children. This course comes with a facilitator's book, a copy of Mark's Tough Guys and Drama Queens book, and a participant's guide. There's even questions at the end of each lesson to help provoke discussion in case you want to go through the course with your friends, neighbors, or church group. You can order the Tough Guys and Drama Queens curriculum series by visiting ParentingTeenResources.com. But I think there's two other things that get ignored that sure need to be looked at. And one is, is, is the presumption that my child will never do that. But I think the, the bigger issue here that parents have got to be made aware of is there is a reason that a child is moving in that direction. Now, there is a part that, that teens are curious and they're just going to do things and make poor choices. That happens. But there may be something underlying in, in the many of these kids that are using that we're missing altogether. And so just stopping your child from using drugs, it, that's only half the battle. The other battle is getting to the root issue so that you can deal with it to keep them from going back to something that now is very familiar with them. If you have pretty hard evidence as a parent that your teen is involved with drugs, it's a very difficult step to take, but you really need to think about uh, drug testing. Don't oh, absolutely. You? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you can get drug strips or, or do urine tests or even take them in for blood tests. I mean, when you find something around the house that's that indicates to you, whether it be drug paraphernalia, you know, any of those things. And don't don't let them say, well, those are my friends. Yeah, they're going to resist. I'm, yeah, I'm just holding it for them. I'm going, moms and dads, that's ding, 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 ding. That's wake a up. sign. Yeah, it's time to wake up. Mm. A child doesn't just carry that stuff around for somebody else. And that's the first excuse that they'll use. And so part of it is saying, you know what, once you find that, then you say, and what we're going to initiate within our home is random drug test, that kind of thing. Now, at Heartlight, we do this. We have a drug dog come 20 times a year, and these dogs search the property. Nice little dogs, <laughs> and our kids just know that they're there. You know what it's for? Accountability. Uh-huh. We have never caught anybody at Heartlight with drugs with these drug dogs. So the family pet should be a drug dog, maybe? <laughs> oh, absolutely. You know, get one of those and train them and just have them bark every time something, you know, happens. But there, but there's a seriousness of that. You yeah. build in a, a, a structure of accountability that that what it does is saying we're not going to use here. You're not going to bring things back home. If you do use, there's consequences. So what do you do? Well, if there's a car involved and they're using a car, if you're ever caught using drugs, mm-hmm. if you ever drive under the influence, the car is gone. It's not that you just lose it for a week or two weeks. It is gone. And so somewhere along that line, you begin to let them know that we're not doing this. And and that's where drug test is an opportunity to say, I'm going to hold you accountable, you know, to some good things. Well, but I'm not using drugs. Then you shouldn't have a problem with with us doing the test. The important message we want you to get today, mom and dad, is that if even if you don't suspect it, you need to think about it. And if you have any evidence at all, you need to act and you need to mm-hmm. act now. You do need to act now. And you know, the first thing that you need to do is go to your medicine cabinet, parents, and look at the drugs that are in your you know, 
legal pantry, drugs. legal drugs, prescription drugs, and see if anything is missing. The curiosity of kids, they will start taking other drugs, and they usually and primarily start at home. Hmm. That is where most kids are getting all of their stuff. And so either lock it up, get rid of it, flush it down the toilet, or hide it or count it so you can measure it somewhere and know that my child is not getting what they want from me. Here's an email that came to us from a parent. We get many of these. My daughter is totally out of control. She does not acknowledge any rules and began to have failing grades last year despite years of being an all-A student. She's been associating herself with a group of kids who have no rules or parenting. We know she abuses alcohol and suspects some drug use. We're at her wit's end. We know we need to get her away from her current environment, and we pray for help. Yeah, it's out of control. You know, and, and I look at that situation, and I say, you know what? She's probably using somewhere, but, but she's using as an escape. You know, if you have a child that's a high achiever, that's an advanced placement, that, that really is driven to do things and wants to perform for everybody in coming home and having to deal with the pressures that she may feel there, then there's a side of it that this child needs some relief. And so you kind of go, how do you spell relief? Mm-hmm. Well, for kids today, what they do is say, I will find it somewhere. Escape, sure. And if it's not in school and if it's not in relationships with people, then it's a new group of friends that just want to chill out and relax. And they may move in that direction. There's a motive behind what they're doing. And what's happening here is that that is what's happening. So they, one of the first things that a parent can do, you know, is to say, you know what? Maybe we need to look in our home and provide a better environment. Now, in the process, you've got to get your child to quit using drugs. Sure. You, you, can't, you can't say, well, I'm going to let them do that the next three or four months while no. we change the nature of our home. You've got to intervene now. You can't stop. If you suspect something, you do it now. I mean, you do it tonight. You confront the issue. And somebody goes, well, I don't know how to confront it. Confront it any way you Mm -hmm. need to, but you get it out on the table so that a child knows that you know, and you're going to start doing something about it. Because what I find many times is when I confront kids on the illicit or inappropriate behavior that they're engaging in, The shock of me knowing, of of being known, sometimes moves them to a point where they go, I do have a problem and I need some help. That's where we're going to go through counseling. That's where we're going to do some things within the home of drug tests. And and we're going to just start asking some questions about what the reasoning behind the drug use is. A final word on this today, Mark, is that we realize how serious this is. But you need, as a parent, to realize how serious this is. And you've got to act on it. You can't just go through life ignoring these signs that we talked about today. You've got to act on on each one of these things. You can't stop. The, The use of drugs among kids is absolutely amazing. If it doesn't kill them, what it may do is destroy options for them in their life and head them in a direction that you don't want them to go and they don't want to go either. Thanks for listening to Parenting Today's Teens. For more information, visit parentingtodaysteens.org. And to learn more about Heartlight, visit heartlightministries.org. If this podcast has been helpful to your family, please share it or give us a quick rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Of course, you can listen to Parenting Today's Teens wherever you listen to podcasts. Join us tomorrow for another great episode. We'll talk to you then.